Hi, in this video I'll be discussing the archaeological grey literature. While the work of academic archaeologists is available to everyone in the form of published books and academic journal articles, the work of commercial archaeologists like myself is often collected in digital libraries controlled by the state regulator of archaeology in the respective country. These libraries are often not well publicised, and the information within them gets overlooked by the general public. Here in New Zealand, the archaeological grey literature is held by Heritage New Zealand in a constantly updated digital library, accessible via their website. At the time of me filming this, it holds 5,982 archaeological reports, and New Zealand is a tiny country. You can imagine how many reports would be held in a country like America or Britain. These are public documents, available to anyone who wants them. Historic England operates a similar resource, and I have links to both down below. If anyone watching knows of other similar repositories of grey literature around the world, please write them in the comments and I'll include links to them as well. I hope to shine a light on the information held in the digital library here in New Zealand, and hopefully encourage you to explore your own grey literature resources. The idea here is that I will pick an archaeological area or site, and showcase the reports relating to the site. For starters, I'll discuss Albert Barracks, a site I mentioned briefly in one of my tour videos. Albert Barracks was the largest British fortress in New Zealand. It served as a home for British troops stationed in Auckland, and as a fortified retreat if Auckland were ever to be attacked by Maori. The construction of the barracks began in late 1846 or early 1847, and it was constructed largely using Maori labour, supervised by George Graham of the Royal Engineers. The sack of Kura Rareka in 1845 had made Aucklanders fear that the exact same thing could happen to them, and the fortress was a response by Governor George Grey to that fear. The 12-foot-high external wall was made of volcanic bluestone basalt, quarried from the nearby Mount Eden. After the British Army left New Zealand, it was abandoned and demolished, with only a small section of the external wall remaining. Looking at the reports in chronological order, the first one is entitled Albert Park Wells, written by H. Brown in 1978. Unsurprisingly, it's a study of the Albert Barracks Wells, done in hopes of reopening them and rebuilding their superstructures as an attraction for the park. It's basically a study of the 1871 plan of the barracks and a relocation of the well sites on the ground, together with a budget to build a replica superstructure. The next report was written in the same year. Excavation of an Albert Barracks well by archaeologist Reg Nickel. He excavated the well next to the barracks prison, prior to a replica well being built on the site. He found that a World War II slip trench dug into the park had cut into the infilled well, and recovered artefacts relating to both the slit trench and the well itself. A large assemblage of military buttons and shako plates was recovered, from the 12th, 40th, 50th, 57th, 58th and 65th regiments of foot, as well as Royal Artillery, Royal Marines, Royal Engineers, Royal Sappers and Miners, Military Train and the Commissariat Staff. The assemblage is housed at the Auckland War Memorial Museum and conserved. Some of the remains can be seen here. Unfortunately, the report does not analyse the assemblage at all. Though the report does note the finding of shell species not present in New Zealand, species only found in Perth or Brisbane in Australia. The next report is called Bluestone and Bureaucracy, written by Jan Coates in 1990, and contains an excellent bit of historic research on the barracks, including many historic photographs, such as contemporary photos of the slip trenches like the one that Nicol had encountered. One fact that was revealed is that the northern gate of the barracks was meant to have been retained as part of the park, something that never eventuated. The archaeological project was focused around the rear of a building near the site of the barracks guardhouse, where the concrete piles from an old extension were being removed. A test excavation uncovered the foundations of the guardhouse and an impression left by a barrel sitting next to it. The next report, entitled Albert Park Rotunda Archaeological Monitoring, written in 2003 by Rod Clough and Micah Plowman, is very minimal, which is proportional to the works involved. The works only consisted of four post holes to strengthen the band rotunda, and despite this, a few artefacts were still discovered, which goes to illustrate the sheer quantity of archaeological material present at the barracks site. The next archaeological report is by far the largest, 
entitled Excavation of the Albert Barracks, 2003, by the archaeological firms Clough & Associates and Geometria. The report details the findings from an excavation of a section of the barracks site that would be destroyed by the construction of the Kate Edgar Information Commons Building at the University of Auckland. The report contains extensive historic discussion of the barracks, looking into both military and civilian use of the facility. Numerous features are analysed. A section of the foundation of the barracks wall was uncovered, as well as a large number of post holes relating to wooden barracks buildings and the later merchant's house. There was also a large rubbish trench, containing a substantial quantity of artefacts from the military occupation. Multiple barrel impressions were found along the alignment of the wall, similar to those found by Coates. The artefacts from the site are analysed in separate chapters in great detail. 3,058 shards of ceramic, originating from a minimum of 858 vessels, including many common 19th century transferware patterns, children's toys, even the Chinese porcelain ginger jar, and the classic Holloway's Ointment Jar. Holloway's Ointment was a 19th century cure-all, meaning that it claimed to cure every medical condition from burns to tumours, and in reality relied on the placebo effect for any real cure. I should really do a video on cure-alls at some point. Anyway, the report then statistically compares the ceramics assemblage to other similar sites around New Zealand. 378 fragments of clay tobacco pipe were found in the project, these popular smoking implements were made from fine kaolin clay and were in heavy use up until the late 19th century, when they'd be gradually replaced in popularity with wooden pipes and cigarettes. Huge amounts of them were produced in factories in Glasgow and elsewhere. The majority in this assemblage were Scottish, though. 12,077 fragments of glass were collected by the archaeological team, representing 390 bottles, as well as window panes and a spectacle lens. The majority of the bottles, 198 of them, were black beers, with 37 wine bottles, 35 gin, and the remainder being a wide selection of other glass vessels. As I mentioned in my video on black beer bottles, the majority of them in this assemblage, coming from a military site, had been opened using the Patton 1853 socket bottle opener. This image shows some of the ornate moulded designs used in 19th century pickle, sauce, vinegar and oil bottles. Torpedo bottles, as I discussed in my soda water video, were also found. Uh, the shape combined with the thick glass required to stop these exploding meant that they often survive well. Unsurprisingly for a military site, there was a wide range of munitions found. This figure shows some of them. A pistol gun flint, a musket ball, five Enfield bullets in varying state of decay, a dozen percussion caps, and a much corroded Snyder cartridge case. Elements of uniform were also recovered, much like the 1978 well excavation, such as fragments from the shako plates. Um, shakos were the military hats worn by British troops for most of the 19th century, and also the uh, decorative military buttons worn by the various regiments. A range of iron artefacts and slag were found during the dig, indicating that there was a workshop and forge active on the site. Various animal bones are also analysed in the report. They are representative of the soldiers' rations, mainly, in the form of cattle, pig, and sheep bone, along with the remains of five dogs from the barracks context, and a later one in a burial behind the merchant's house. As a dry land site, little in the way of wood and leather survived in the ground, but the report does present some remnants of the soldiers' boots and other items. It's a good thing this report goes into so much detail, as unlike the well assemblage, the artefacts from this excavation did not go to a museum afterwards. When the Auckland Art Gallery conducted extension works to the rear of the gallery, they were doing earthworks within the Albert Barracks site. The 2010 report by archaeologist Barry Backey, entitled Auckland Art Gallery, Toy Automati, Extension, Archaeological Monitoring Report, documents those earthworks. Some fragments of the basalt outer wall were discovered, as well as part of the soldiers' garden. An interesting historic feature encountered was the entrance to the network of World War II tunnels that ran under Albert Park. Metal artefacts and voids were encountered, but as they did not affect the project, it wasn't investigated further. You may notice from my tunnels overlay that the air raid tunnels cover a vast area, and given the number of wells in the barracks, they'd be lucky not to hit one. This is precisely what happened. 
While digging from the direction of the art gallery, the tunnelers ran into a curved brick wall. As they exposed it, it collapsed, flooding the tunnel. The well was found to be 90 foot deep, that's 27 metres, and it had to be piped out to Wellesley Street and the well filled with tunnel spoil so the tunnelling work could continue. The last report in this set in the digital library is from the path upgrade in Albert Park. It saw the existing paving lifted and replaced all across the park, and remnants of the barracks were encountered. However, the digital library only contains one report relating to the project. Albert Park Upgrade Monitoring 2010, Pavement Renewal, Second Interim Report 2011 by Barry Backey. It details the monitoring of the pavement stripping in the northern part of the park, and a small number of features and artefacts encountered during the course of those works. I don't know where the report is for the remainder of the path upgrade work. I hope this has illustrated the range of archaeological reports that can be found in the archaeological grey literature just about one site. If you want to browse the Heritage New Zealand Digital Library, I will have a link to it down below. They're all public documents and freely available. If you want to find the equivalent wherever you live, you should contact whatever state organisation is responsible for regulating archaeology and they'll be able to direct you to their database of grey literature. If you like this video, please say I'm keen to do more. I'm happy to look at other parts of the country. Thanks for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers!